I've been playing a ton of universe mode recently to find out what has gone missing over the years. From Smackdown vs Raw 2011 to WWE 2K24, I played through every single version of the mode that has ever been released and in this video I will share my findings to give you the 11 universe mode features that have been removed in WWE games. Quickly before I get into today's video, make sure you're subscribed with all notifications turned on. Don't forget to also like this video if you do end up enjoying it. And let me know in the comments which universe mode feature do you want back. Now let's get right into the first feature that has been removed. A huge acquisition. Introduced in WWE 12's Universe Mode, the draft allowed Universe Modes to be shaken up with a post-WrestleMania draft. This feature worked similar to WWE TVs at the time. A Raw superstar faced a SmackDown superstar and the winner's roster got a draft pick. What made it even better, however, was the visual effect of the random draft picker showing all the potential superstars who might get drafted. Seeing the drafted superstar make their entrance and being announced as the draft pick for Raw or SmackDown added that extra layer of excitement. The detail made Universe Mode feel more like what we saw on WWE TV. The draft feature was removed after WWE 2K16, coinciding with WWE's shift away from drafts and featuring superstars on both Raw and SmackDown. However, since 2016, WWE has been heavily focused on brand splits and drafts again, making the return of a draft system to Universe Mode a pretty sensible addition. Some might suggest that you could just manually swap superstars between brands already in Universe Mode, but let's be honest, it's nowhere near as fun and exciting as having an integrated draft system in Universe Mode. WWE 13 introduced branching cutscenes to Universe Mode, which all sounded great before the game released. Like, think of the possibilities that could happen now. Universe Mode cutscenes would feel different each and every time you got a branching cutscene. And if there's many of them, then it could last so much longer than any Universe Mode before it. Except, that wasn't really the case, however. There weren't many branching cutscenes, and the scenes were incredibly hard to get to trigger in WWE 13's Universe Mode. But just because they were hard to get in the game doesn't mean it was a bad idea. Branching cutscenes could really have changed Universe Mode for the better, and made scenes less repetitive, which was one of the common complaints at the time. Had there been more branching scenes and been more frequent, this feature would have likely been remembered more fondly. In recent WWE 2K games, the branching cutscene feature has largely gone missing. I remember getting one in WWE 2K22, but I believe since the change to the rivalry action feature, there's no longer any branching cutscenes. Show intros have been in and out of Universe Mode over the years. They were first seen in WWE 12's Universe Mode, before being removed from WWE 13's Universe Mode, then years later in WWE 2K17, they'd been put back in with the addition of the actual intros for Raw and SmackDown playing first, as well as the commentary team introducing the player to the show. With WWE 2K22 onwards, the show intros had been taken out of the game once again and have not been seen since. Now sure, they aren't a huge deal, but they do add to the overall presentation of a WWE event in Universe Mode. And the great thing about them was that if you didn't like them, you could just turn them off and you'll never see them again. Promos were originally added in WWE 2K17 and only lasted a few games until they were removed in WWE 2K22. Promos are a love-hate feature in Universe Mode due to some really not liking promos in Universe Mode and it is completely understandable why they were not liked. The text was pretty cringy and would often not be what the character would actually say. Like you'd have The Undertaker cracking the goofiest of jokes whilst being the dead man character. It just didn't work very well. But then again, on the other hand, it does add to the complete package of what you would expect to see on WWE TV. WWE, as we already know, is not just about in-ring action. The interviews and the promos are just as much a part of the TV experience. So getting rid of them does take away from that TV presentation feel. I thought this might happen. There's no way he was going to find a partner. Don't speak too soon, King.
Mystery matches were introduced all the way back when Universe Mode first launched in SmackDown vs Raw 2011. The way they worked was completely random. You'd get a match card for the week, and one match possibly could contain a mystery person in that match. It was a pretty cool feature, just to make things more unpredictable and different each week on the shows. Hey, look who's joining us! It's the winner of the Royal Rumble! Maybe we'll find out who he's going to challenge at WrestleMania tonight! Well, don't go pestering him with a ton of questions. In fact, pretend like he's not even here, Michael. Hey, have a seat next to me! WWE 12's Universe Mode, a winner's event was added for the Royal Rumble match. What would happen is that the winner of the Rumble match would be seen coming down to the ring to go on commentary to watch the match between the world champions of Raw and SmackDown. And during that match, you would have to interfere and take out the person that you wanted to face at WrestleMania. It's not been seen in Universe Mode for many years now. And if you have a winner of the Raw Rumble match now, then it will just be instantly booked against the champion of the brand that they are already on, instead of letting the winner decide who they would like to face at WrestleMania. Well, I think we know who he's chosen to face at WrestleMania. What a match that's going to be. Hey, what's Randy Orton doing out here? King, look at Orton's icy eyes. The Vipers coil to strike. Oh boy, Randy Orton can get you when you least expect it. In the early days of Universe Mode, there would actually be quite a few cutscenes that were for the superstars in the game, rather than being generic cutscenes that anyone could get. You could get one with the Brothers of Destruction both choke slamming their opponents after the match and celebrating together. You could get DX beating down their opponents, Undertaker choke slamming a rival after the match. Randy Orton's surprise RKO in arrival after the match and so on. Other than the few super old Undertaker cutscenes that still remain in 2K24, there's no cutscenes that are specific to an actual superstar and with all the characters currently on the WWE roster, there's no excuse not to have them back in the game. Starting with WWE 12, you could manually interfere in matches. The system was pretty awesome because you could choose to directly help someone win a match whilst the ref is down. All you had to do was make the choice when you wanted to wake the referee up while someone was getting pinned. This could lead to some great heel turns or heel faction members helping their other members in the group get a win. But it didn't just end there, you could also choose the chaos option and beat everyone down and cause the match to end as a no contest. And hell, if you wanted to do, you could just stand around, do nothing and get thrown out by the security. You, you could really do that. The option was completely yours to make. In the current WWE 2K Universe mode, it isn't possible to manually choose when to interfere in a match. Like many of the things mentioned in this video so far, WWE 12 was where the injuries first appeared in the mode. Now, we still have injuries in Universe mode, but when someone returns from an injury, they just return and that's it. Nothing happens. But when injured superstars were returning in WWE 12, they'd be seen running down to the ring making their big return by saving another superstar who is getting beat up in the ring. You could also even return and turn heel by looking like you're going to save someone but hit them with a chair instead. It was a much better way of having someone return from an injury. It is a real shame that injury returns are so boring in the current universe mode. This match isn't over yet. Did you forget about your other opponent? Now ring the bell. Starting with the original Universe mode in SmackDown vs Raw 2011, you could find unlockable characters within the mode by doing such things as winning a certain amount of matches, and then when you've done that, you'll have to face off against the unlockable superstar in a bonus match. And then in WWE 12, you had people like Brock Lesnar returning to WWE in the first match that you play in Universe mode. It was a really fun way of unlocking characters by also making the unlockables tied to stories within the universe. And lastly, we have tournaments that have been removed from universe mode. Finally, something that actually wasn't introduced in WWE 12 for once. It was first introduced in WWE 2K14, and it allowed you to play a full King of the Ring tournament during a show, and it would still only take up one spot on the match card. King of the Ring in universe mode would last until WWE 2K17, where it would be removed from universe and has not returned since then.